I'm going to do an exercise for Siamese Mahjong. This version of the game is based on American Mahjong using the card, but you play two hands at one time with one opponent. It's very challenging and a lot of fun. If you haven't tried it yet, look for my email in the video description below. I can send you information about where to play online. There's also a link in the video description below for the rules, which have been changed from the four player game. The purpose of this exercise is to practice decision making when you first get your drawn tiles. Player one gets 28, player two, 27. That's a lot of tiles. So I do random pulls to practice decision making. And if you wanna play online, you gotta do it quick. You get two minutes to make a decision. If you're not quick enough, the game will toss a tile for you. We don't want that to happen. So if you have a set of tiles at home, give it a try. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. We're going to do three random pulls. We'll start out as player one, and then we'll go to player two and back to player one. So 28 tiles, then 27, and then back to 28. Okay, so we have a joker, east and west pair of east, white dragon, one, two, three, four, six, seven in cracks, pair of sixes. In bams, one, two, four, five, seven, eight, nine, pair one, pair two, pung, nine. For dots, we have one, two, four, seven, eight. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on and what would be your first discards? If these were my tiles, I would focus on consecutive run, little numbers and big numbers. Let's start with the big ones. So we have this pung of nines. One thing we could do is the third hand down under consecutive run. Six, seven, eight, nine, no gaps. That's pretty good. But there's also a potential for the fifth hand down, which is a little bit of a higher point hand. We have a gap though, we need five crack five six seven eight nine five six seven eight nine these would be kongs so i would hold the eight for sure and since we're playing consecutive i would hold all six through nine and see what develops then up here i would focus on one two we have one, two, one, two, one, two. If we get flowers, we might even be able to play a pair hand. That would be the third hand down. One, two. One, two, one, two, one, two flowers, which we have a gap. The other thing we could do is one, two, one, two, three, concealed. So I would hold all consecutive tiles one through five down here, six through nine. And probably this will need to go, but I would start by discarding these. That's how I would play this. Whenever you have consecutive run like this, little numbers, big numbers, you could also play evens and odds, depending on how your gaps are arranged. Right now, we have, for example, one, three, seven, eight, nine, 
seven, no five dot, nine bam. That would be the first hand on the right under odds. One, three, five, seven, nine. We could also do two, four, six, eight. So here's two, four, six, two, four, eight. There's a four and an eight. It's a bit bleak for either two, four, six, eight or one, three, five, seven, nine. That's why I think consecutive in this case is a better start. And then see how the tiles fill in. We have a joker, flowers, then we have west and south with a pair of south, green dragon, in cracks, one, two, seven, eight, nine, pairs, one, two, seven, eight. In dots, we have one, two, three, five, eight, pair of eight dots, bams, two, three, six, seven, nine, singles. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on and what would be your first discards? If these were my tiles, I think I would try for a pair hand with consecutive tiles and then one, two, three consecutive run. Seven, eight pair hand. There is some potential for one, three, five, five, seven, nine concealed. But that would deplete this up here, I think. The other thing I was thinking up here is we could do one, two, one, two, three, concealed. When you play Siamese Mahjong, sometimes you can actually pick a hand from the beginning. So we have one, two, one, two, three, concealed. And then down here, seven, eight, pair hand. Maybe hold these down here for one, three, five, five, seven, nine flower. I'll just put it together here so you can see it. If we were to do that, we'd have to throw away two pair. That's why I think the pair hand is a better idea. We can use all those pairs. Let's see. So I would keep all consecutive tiles up here, one through five, and then down here, six through nine, seven, eight, seven, eight, seven, eight. So we need a seven dot and an eight, bam. But I would hold the nines and sixes because we might be able to play something consecutive if this pair hand doesn't work. And incidentally, we could do the same thing up here, one, two pair hand. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So we're missing a one bam. And then down here, instead of the pair hand, we could play seven, eight, seven. Use this down here. Seven, eight, seven, eight, nine. Seven, eight, seven, eight, nine concealed. Same hands. Hold these for plan B. Either way, we didn't use any of these tiles. So I would discard those first.
we have a joker, a flower, almost news. In cracks, we have one, three, four, six, nine. Pair one, pung three, pung four. In dots, we have one, three, four, six, eight, pair of threes. In bams, we have one, four, five, six, eight, nine, pair of fours. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on? And what would be your first discards? If these were my tiles, I would focus on the concealed consecutive hand. Three, four, three, four, five. We might even be able to do this hand pure. We could maybe use the joker to help here. So now we have to recover with something up here. Our multiples are ones and fours. I was thinking we could maybe do three, six, nine, three, six, six, nine, three, six, nine, but that might deplete the tiles. We might be able to do like numbers with nine, uh, four, let's see, like numbers with fours. If we do three, six, nine, Let's see, there's all the ones. There's a four, eight, eight, six, nine. So let's just look at three, six, nine. This hand looks pretty good, but if we play three, six, nine, that's gonna use all these tiles. Three, six, nine. And then here's fours. Fours. Maybe we could do north and south with ones. Discard those. Three different hands. Three, six, nine. Like numbers with fours, north and south with ones. I don't think I would do that though. I think the three, four, three, four, five is much stronger. That could even be a pure hand. So we're going to go back. Three, four, three, four, five. I think that's pretty good. Then up here, we do have a little bit of two, four, six, eight but we have a gap with no twos. Six, six, eight, four, six, eight, no twos. Maybe still hold the ones and the north. Discard these first. Since this hand, well, really, the category is weak. We really have the same number of tiles for north and south with ones, and there's no gaps. We would just have to build up. We could maybe use this for joker bait. Use the joker for the north and south. Probably wouldn't need that. So that gives us nine discards. I try to get to where I have eight discards or less with whatever plan I have going on. This I think looks really good. Up here, not so much. We've got work to do, but there are no gaps. The other challenge with playing wins, especially if you don't have very many, if your opponent is not playing wins, they're gonna discard them first. And clearly we're not ready to claim any discards to complete these. We need Kongs. So that's another challenge. I think what I would do because of that is hold that for plan B 
and focus on two, four, six, eight. Leveraging the four bam. Maybe we could use that flower. I don't know. Two, four, six, eight in one suit, maybe. I wouldn't pick a hand. There's just not enough there. But I would hold this and see what my opponent is doing with wins. If they are not discarding wins, they're probably going to be using them, which is another reason why wins are tough in Siamese Mahjong. They're either discarded early or your opponent has them. I think what I would do is hold on to those and see what happens. Play two, four, six, eight, discard these first, and three, four, three, four, concealed. When you first get your drawn tiles, organize them by suit and in order. Then look for multiples or the predominant pattern and pick categories that use most of your tiles. Stay concealed as long as possible. That way you can share the jokers and the tiles between the hands. Once you start making exposures, you'll be more and more committed as you expose. And then of course, when you declare Mahjong for one of your hands, then those tiles are locked in, including the jokers. I have seen two ways that people play this game. One person might play one hand at a time. And when they declare Mahjong or have that hand complete, they'll keep it concealed and work on a second hand with the remaining tiles. One hand at a time, kind of a phased approach. The other way that I see people play is playing two hands at one time. That's how I typically play. Two hands at one time and you work the tiles together until you develop complete hands. How do you play? And if there's another way that I didn't mention, write it in the comment section below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click that little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.